Hi all, a uh, little bit of a catch up on R2, haven't been doing many videos lately as you know. Um, apologies for being away so long and uh, not uh, keeping up the videos but uh, <clears throat> for a while there I wasn't doing an awful lot of the work because, uh, well long story short, um, uh, I just wasn't too well. Uh, looks like I may have two different forms of arthritis and uh, it's really getting into my hands and just about everything I do hurts. Um, permanently now basically so anyway you don't want to hear about all that I'm sure you're here to watch how R2 is getting on so here we go so this is what I've done is I've just run some cable down the the legs here and I'm going to use these uh, XT60 connectors like you get on the drones and the uh, model cars and things um, so that the foot can be released there'll be um, there'll be a little plug and socket there there'll be another plug and socket at the shoulder so the leg can come out and be uh, removed. Uh, I'll give you a bit more info on this but uh, you'll see in the last few weeks I've uh, managed to build up the foot drives. Um, had them tested and working, they seem fine. I haven't had them connected up to the Padawan system yet though so that's going to be interesting. Um, so for now I just thought I'd show you how this is coming on. Um, basically this is the center drive system, the four-wheel drive system. So you've got the NPC motors, that's the NPC 2212s uh, from NPC Robotics in the States. And then really uh, there's a, a chassis here, all the plans for this chassis uh, are on astromech.net. Uh, just look up the Senna, uh, it's Mike Senna who uh, designed this I believe. Uh, it's his designs and lots of drawings, you can either make this bracket yourself um, I had a go out of um, some aluminium box section but didn't make a very good job of it. Um, was talking to a local engineering company about getting this made up but then um, I put something in the group chat and one of the, one of the chaps, uh, Matthew I think it was, said oh I've got, a, I've got a spare set which I didn't use so um, I went to pick those up and then I've ordered all the other bits and pieces as per the bill of materials again on the website casters are the hardest thing to get hold of and I've had to 3D print some hubs and I just hope they're going to hold. Um, I can see me having to take those out and redo them someday but uh, for now it'll be just nice to get him moving and tested. So so basically the motor is driving uh, this cog here and then that goes through the axle which then goes to the other side and drives the second wheel so it's four wheel drive uh, and then there's a tensioner uh, as an idler there so you can that just moves up and down, literally in and out of there, or up and down as you're looking at it, you know, in its normal orientation, and that allows you to put more or less tension on the spring, spring on the chain. I beg your pardon. So, um, so yeah. So um, I'll get on with these connectors so that it can all be connected up, and then we'll give it a quick test. Okay. So that first leg worked very well. That was uh, quite successful. So I'm going to do the same to the other leg now, and I can show you a little bit more of what I was doing because on that one uh, I'd already pretty much done most of it. So the motors come like this. Uh, I was worried about the thickness of the cable actually so I got this is 17 ampere sorry 17 amp cable um, which I'm, I, I wonder is still maybe a little bit low but I suspect it's probably higher rated than this cable I'm not sure but uh, we'll see. So the first thing is what I'm going to do is uh, trim this back, tin the wires um, so that they're ready to solder and what I'm doing is I'm doing uh, things that plug in I'm doing with plugs and the other end is going to be a socket so for example the motor is going to have a, a male plug because it plugs into the leg which will have a socket and then the other end where the leg attaches to the body I'm going to have a socket inside the chassis and there'll be a plug on the end of here so it'll be plug socket and then plug socket and then the two wires will go back to the speed controller so that's the plan so one thing I did have to do for this and I will, uh, I will tell you in case you need to know I had a fairly cheap very basic soldering iron and because these the backs of these X T60s. They're, they're quite big. There's quite a big chunk of metal there. I'll show you when I get one open again. Um, so because of that and because the wire is quite thick, you can see the thickness of the core in there, 
takes a lot of heat to solder it properly. Um, it's very easy to end up with a dry joint because they just don't heat up very quickly. So I bought a new solder uh, soldering station which is pretty good because this will actually go up quite high. Uh, I think it's four or 400 or 450 degrees C this one will do so uh, it's a bit better and I can monitor it and it's got a few more options. So yeah. The other thing that you can do with it is you can put different put different tips in. So that's very very narrow, which isn't very good for for heating large areas of metal. So um, I'm hoping to get a, a the sort of flatter, wider sort of spade shaped um, soldering iron tip. So anyway, that's it for now. I'll uh, make a start on this and I'll show you how we're getting on. Okay, so that gives you an idea what I was talking about with the uh, they're quite large metal contacts. This is an old one actually. I've uh, I'm reusing. I've run out of the, uh, the new XT60s, so I'm just sort of reclaiming some from some old um, battery Y splitters and uh, connectors. So what I'm doing because this is quite um, you need quite a lot of heat on these, and they get a bit hot to hold. So I'm just trapping the um, socket in a vise like so at least that's one thing I don't have to hold um, and um, removing this and popping those in okay so with this new iron I'm getting much much more heat on these connections and they're looking a whole lot better um, definitely stronger and I'm getting the insulation a lot closer as well. So now I'm going to put a little bit of heat sink, sorry, heat sink, heat shrink, I should say, on both of those. We have hot air gun. We don't ever want those shorting out because that will be a big bang and lots of sparks which you don't want and it'll probably be very expensive as well because it will kill batteries and possibly even motors so so okay so that's that's one done and that is the plug so it's the male ooh, where are we so it's the male side of it and then what we'll do is on the bottom of the leg I've drilled some holes in there uh, and quite importantly actually I've um, Deburred that hole um, quite aggressively, so there's it's you can put your finger in that hole and spin it, and you won't cut yourself because what we don't want, of course, is the pardon me the edge of the metal to chafe away and, and cut through the insulation, and then we'd have another nice big bang and fireworks. So yeah, so there's all this all this stuff to do. Um, so okay, I'm now going to just um, trim that back uh, and do exactly the same as I did with this except for I'm going to put a socket on it. Okay so that's the second leg all wired up so basically same again uh, a socket here for the wiring from the leg to the motor and this is where it will just connect up to the body now obviously these wires will eventually be hidden as will the motor by the battery boxes so now it's time to give it a test now these motors are quite strong and it's got four-wheel drive and very very grippy tractiony type uh, casters so I don't connect it up when the wheels can touch anything otherwise it will be racing off on me so what I've found is if you use a workmate open it up so that the wheels will drop down so if I can lift this with one arm oh my god it's very heavy oh. okay so the wheels now are clear as you can see so I'm gonna plug the battery in and give it a test let's see if I can uh, the camera somewhere where you can actually see and hopefully you'll see it moving and hear it moving and you won't just see a big flash and cloud of smoke and oh, where's the battery gone back in a sec okay I found a battery I'm just using one of these little 2.2 ampere hour 11 point what are they 11.1 volt batteries so they're a little bit under power but I'll do it for a test, so hopefully we're not going to get a big bang. And there we go. That's working well. Right. So, okay. And if you look from underneath, nice and smooth and quiet. You 
just running from that little battery, wherever it's gone. There it is. Well, I'm quite pleased with that. Bam. Not long now, and it'll be moving.